For too long, amphibians have only dared to come out at night. But the waxy monkey frog says no more. This amphibian has chosen to step into the sun and lay eyes upon an earth in full brightness of day. There's just one problem. How can a supple tree frog avoid drying out in direct sunlight? Our friend the monkey frog has a wonderful waxy way to stay cool in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie and Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy, or visit us at our home on the web at LDTaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, <laughs> to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your help and support. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a frog with a killer skincare routine, but more on that later. Nice. Yeah. This has got a weird name for sure. When I, I like saw it. it, when I saw it on the list, I was like, oh yeah, this is... <laughs> the waxy monkey frog. <laughs> He's wet. He's such a such a slippery monkey. Um, that sounds like a yoga pose. It sure does. Uh, it sounds like several oh, yeah. things, but we'll go with yoga. Or pose. like a fighting style. Yeah, this is they. They'll make a whole Jackie Chan movie about this one. There's Drunken Master or, and yeah, then Waxy Monkey. Or, a, uh, or the Statue MacGuffin in a uh, noir movie. What, you lost me there. I've never seen a noir <laughs> movie that had a MacGuffin. <laughs> like the M- <laughs> Maltese Falcon. Oh, okay. Well, I uh, yeah. Something is stole. It's the it's the it's the the Pink Panther. Yeah. They stole the waxy monkey frog, and now I must get to kill you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that movie's so dumb, and I love it. Um, the <laughs> so It's also called the waxy monkey leaf frog, or the waxy monkey tree frog. Just, just uh, different iterations. As long as waxy monkey is in there, um, I'm happy. Uh, but it, we're going to call it here the lean green sunscreen machine. And just green screen in general. That's a, that's a good one. Um, and the Betty Bye Frog, because he's got melatonin. Huh. Uh. That's Bibby's. She, she came up with that one. It's pretty good. Um, do you want to know what this taxonomizes as? That's a human I'd sentence. I'd fully enjoy that. Um, the kingdom is one you know, love, and are in. The kingdom is Animalia, and the phylum is Chordata. She's got a spine. The class is amphibia. Because it likes water and not water. Mm-hmm. Um, the order is a neura, so it's a true frog. Or toad. Um, true the, Nord. Oh, that's a, that's a deep Skyrim pole, man. <laughs> um, the, the family is Hy- Hylidae. The genus is Phylomedusa. And the species, Salvaggi. So, Phylomedusa, Salvaggi. Salvaggi. Nice. Is the binomial nomenclature. So, since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, nitty gritty nomenclature. Yeah. Because we already know that frogs come in armies. And you had some sort of trapper keeper or something in high school that told you that yeah. um so we're gonna we're gonna figure out what phylomedusa means um because uh salvaggi is just the it's it's a patronym it's the name of the guy who discovered them dr henri emile sauvage 
Uh-huh. Um, but Phyla Medusa is not named after a person, so we're going to figure out what that means. What does it mean? Does it mean A, leaf guardian? B, leaf guardian luminescent Leviosa. stone? Leaf <laughs> guardian. <laughs> Well, it got me. I don't know why. Um, uh, we just watched the fifth movie of, of that last night. Um, anyway, Leaf Guardian is number is A. Uh, the B B is luminescent stone. C is snake food, and D is vigilant wax. Philo Medusa. I guess the uh, the hint is that is Greek, but I, you probably already knew that. I guess snake food because Medusa. I can understand. Oh, uh, what did you say? Vigilant wax. That makes sense to me. Um, but I'm gonna go with um, snake food. Final answer. That is incorrect. The answer is leaf guardian. Medusa uh, means guardian. Leaf guardian leviosa. I did. I would have got. I would have said snake food as well because I was like Medusa is snakes. Or I, I was thinking maybe stone would get you, because um, she turns people into stone. Oh. But nope. So Medusa means guardian, and Does apparently Philo means leaf or leaf like. Does she guard something in the uh, Prometheus or whatever Perseus myth? In Greek mythology, probably. I mean. A- uh, a, a a monster that turns anything it looks at into stone is a pretty darn good guardian, I'd say. Yeah, like that's 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 my uh, that'd be my first draft of picks. That and the and like the lion, eagle, snake thing. Um, do you want to know what this frog looks like? Frog sure do. Baggins. Um, I nominate this frog for best frog. This is like the platonic ideal for a frog. He's just so green. He is. And it's not easy being green. It's We know how tough it is for amphibians of color, so it is not easy. Um, although it can change to brown, depending on its environment. So, um, But because it lives in the trees, in the, in the leafy green trees, it is mostly bright green. Uh, they have wide heads, pudgy body, pot bellies. Sorry, not body. Well, yeah, pot belly goblin. They've got, yeah. Um, is that a magic card? <laughs> that sounds like a magic. That's something card. that Alex Jones said once. What? Uh, we're not gonna get into Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to go down this this road. It's it's <laughs> the you mentioning that and us and like the the the, the us talking about the frogs? idea of. The idea of going on a ta- an Alex Jones tangent was like Frodo looking down the road when the when the like the the, the Nazgul are coming and it's like you get that like Jaws um, <laughs> camera angle and like the leaves blow and it looks like no 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 not that road. Um, anyway, I forgot what the 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 um the camera trick the like the film trick it was f- that Jaws did when it's like zooming in but also zooming out at the same time. Anyway. Um, so they have white heads, the aspect, pud- changing the like width of the lens or something. No, nah, it's like because it's zooming into the the subject, but zooming out, but bringing in the in background. The, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, some, it's something of a, a, a film nerd would be able to tell us, and I probably knew when I took my one film class, but nope, don't remember. Um, the waxy monkey frog has long limbs for jumping and clinging to branches. Like um, a monkey. They even have opposable thumbs. Like Take monkey. that, monkeys, simians, lording that over the rest of the the animal kingdom. Turns out that frogs got opposable thumbs too. They just don't use them in as varied of a way. They don't use tools. Um, they also have cream colored racing stripes because they're that cool. Uh, they go along their jawlines and down their chest. 
Um, actually, really speed. striking. Like, yeah, they got to go fast. Um, and they have uh very large yellow eyes, and they have those like typical frog slit pupils. But when their uh, pupils are opened up, uh, it, I think it's like the closest thing we have to like an adorable frog. So. <laughs> I think adorable frogs are often made through tininess. But like, like the having... pebble toad. But it's still got like a toad face. And that's that's kind of what take like the uh poison dart frogs, those are pretty cute. But I don't know. I'm not I don't think frogs are that cute especially when something like a stoat exists like i can't really give it to frogs <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the stand the the curve they set the curve way too high they're that kid in the front of the class that just like got 115 percent on the on the darn test well there's like the the traditional tree frog that when its mouth is open it looks like it's smiling happily yeah, that's pretty good. Or that gecko that that looks like it's that like photogenic gecko, leopard gecko that's that's smiling. That's pretty good too. Mm-hmm. But like that's again, that's pretty good. That's like that's like Leonardo DiCaprio level, but uh, for for acting. But like I'm talking about Daniel Day Lewis level of acting and adorableness for the stoat. Like it's just it's it's a different. True. There's there's a different there's a, there's a chasm between yeah. But we're we're, we're these, talking these categories. Best in category, not best in show. Yeah, so I do nominate this for best frog, um, <laughs> and and I'm not going to nominate the Grinch. But would you like to t- tell us how uh, big this boy is? Sure. Welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listeners' favorite part of the show, the part of the show that's introduced by uh, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms. That's through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in to, uh, audio of yourself saying, singing, or croaking the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't nice. have any measure up intro this week. We did get a nice email from uh, somebody who is requesting a particular animal. More on that when we do the particular animal. But uh, no measure yes, up thank intros. You. Um, so let's hear from an animal. I and mean, Carlos is the guest for what it is. Ooh, it's been a little while, I think, since you've done this one. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. (laughs) Is that A, a vulture, C, a squirrel? B, a raccoon, or D, a seagull? Oh, man, if that's a squirrel, we're all in trouble. <laughs> um, You can see, prob- I'm torn between vulture and raccoon. Where the- did, I- can you- did I hear, I, th- I think I heard crickets. Uh, I'm going to go with raccoon, final answer. There's definitely four sounds. Okay. Uh, the correct answer was squirrel. That's a squirrel. Oh. What? Well, that's a... That's not... That's... No, that's a, that's a rooster somewhere in the background. That's a squirrel. That's a squirrel? Are they vivisecting it? What is happening? <laughs> it, no, it's just... Uh, it's It looked maybe it could be like pregnant. Maybe I've seen so many squirrels. The I have I even seen had... a squirrel make a weird rasping sound like this. But not this one's particularly striking. Yeah, it sounds prehistoric. <laughs> it does sound like a pterodactyl. Which doesn't make sense. We don't know what pterodactyl how how could we possibly know? Um Wow, okay. Well, um I've just gained a, a little bit of uh, fearful respect of squirrels. Good. 
Let's talk about the length of the waxy monkey frog. They're two, two, three inches. Or five to, to eight centimeters. How many waxy monkey frogs go into the largest monkey? Bonus points if you know what a, the largest monkey is. Largest monkey. Monkey. If if a howler monkey is the largest monkey. If you're a listener and you're screaming gorilla into your uh, into your car radio, then you need to pay attention to this show more often. And you need to figure out how radios work. <laughs> uh, I'll give you another hint. It is an old world monkey. Ooh, I thought baboons were apes. Mm, they are not. But I guess not. They must be monkeys. Final answer. But maybe it's not a mon- maybe it's not a baboon. I'm gonna go with baboon, um, uh, as the largest monkey. Well, here's a hint: the largest monkey is a mandrill, an old world monkey, very similar in style to a baboon. To a baboon. So if you saw if you look up a picture, you're like you're not far off. I, I, I would consider that a win. I do I do remember the the word mandrill and being like that's just a baboon. <laughs> and and I I took I opened my, the baboon box in my brain and there was surprisingly little in there but I put took that photo and just put that right in there so it's just filed under baboons in my <laughs> in my head. Um. But uh. Yeah. So how many? I waxy? had to. I I was driving in South Africa and I had to stop in the road because a bunch of baboons were in the way, and apparently they're really aggressive. So I was a little bit a little bit afraid. That's but what I. Moved. That's what I call anyone who's in my way on the road. A baboon. Get out of my way, you baboon! Yeah, it's pretty good. That's very G-rated of you. Yeah, if only it was G-rated. When I a banding, on the bumbling road. <laughs> band of baboons. I think that's what Professor McGonagall says. Um, all right, so basically a ba- a baboon. Um, a baboon. What? How many inches for the waxy monkey frog? Three. Three inches. Baboons are... A one, are... a two, a three. <laughs> the world may never know. Um, Baboons are big. They're big boys. Or mandrills. Is Rafiki a mandrill? I don't know. He looks like a regular old bamboo. No, I'm not going to look it up because then I'll be... I, I might accidentally see how long they are. Um, uh, I'm holding my arms out. A mandrill so does this look helps. like Rafiki. Like... Um, let's go with four feet. He is a mandrill. Four, four feet from snout to... To blue, vent. very blue vent. Um, so I'm going to go 16. 16 waxy monkey frogs go from snout to vent on Rafiki. Final Our friend answer. Rafiki. Our Rafiki Rafiki. Yes. <laughs> 16. The correct answer is 12. Oh, that is probably not... A Mandrills are 37 inches or 95 centimeters. So close. Not a nursing school victory. So let's talk about male-female size difference. Size sexual dimorphism. So female frogs are this percentage larger than males. This percentage is also close to the percentage of Americans That believed the sun revolved around the earth in 2012. What is that percentage? I know this answer because I saw it. You did? Yes, I did. Oh, the size difference? In fact, fact, I did the math using this percentage in order to get the, the upper end of average for the female weight that I wrote down. Yeah, you know what? I I shouldn't shouldn't have the thing. A one-to-one is difficult. I should have had you guess the, pers- the 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 second thing. 
That's what I intended to do. But anyway, here's a hint. Um, the survey uh, was taken by the National Science Foundation and only involved 2,200 2, people. So considering there are 331.9 million people in the United States, this survey is only a little bit more representative of general American thought than a Jaden Smith tweet. I guess that means something to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand the these surveys that that start with this percentage of Americans. It's like no no because you didn't poll me, bub. You didn't poll anybody I know. You took a couple thousand people that you thought were representative of yes, the 330 something million people that live here and said, "Yes, this many percentage this percentage of Americans uh like to like to wait 30 seconds after pouring milk on their cereal before eating it. Like that's, it's just, and it, it might be like, it might be more telling if it was like an opinion poll, your poll and like the 2000 plus people came from different parts of the country and there was a massive consensus that might be a little bit more telling than, do you know this fact? Do you know the <laughs> fact about the, the sun? Uh, yeah, that's, the, yeah, this it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. The, 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 it's 20, 25% is the answer, but the 25% of surveyed participants said this, that's, that's the only thing that your study told us, told us nothing about America at large. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Useless statistics. Get it out of my face. You're just using it to to further some sort of uh, to tell some sort of story. And I don't want to hear it. So I already females, don't like your story. Females are what did you say? Females are twenty five percent larger than males. Yeah, and it's like twenty six percent of Americans in that poll. Twenty six percent of two hundred and two thousand two hundred Americans. Wow, so that means one out of every four people that I encounter believes that the, uh, what what did you say? Heliocentric? Or no, yeah, uh, sun revolves around the earth. This earth, sun revolves around the earth, yeah. Um, such a staggering statistic. We need to, uh, I don't know what, up education in our schools? I don't know what the point of that is. Give cash you, to your you, local you, middle school. I don't know why you waste your time even conducting a survey like that. We we went on 4chan and po pulled 2,020, 2,200 people. And a lot of them were like really nasty people. So I guess most people are nasty. Yeah. If you, well, if you go by Twitter standards, everyone's the worst. But if you go by Facebook standards, everyone um, is living loves their best the life now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's either like really politically charged or they're super into those little little yellow boys <laughs> little yellow uh, overall boys um all right okay so yes 25 percent larger it, it brings you to about 3.75 inches for females yeah because i because i knew you do the upper end of average and they didn't give the female upper end so i i did did the very extremely complicated math to figure that out. Um, well, do you have any deftly maneuvering facts before we get into the major fact? Yeah, and 25% of Americans believe all these facts. Um, <laughs> we should start just like randomly spitting out like global statistics like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to uh, do it like we'll do a Twitter poll and like four people will answer, but we'll say, please don't answer if you're not American. And then we'll say that way. That way, we know that all Americans have this is representative. Yeah. So the majority of Americans think that um, that uh, measure, up measure up is the best <laughs> segment. <laughs> um, or and then you you back it up by like walking down Fifth Avenue and just like 
uh, shoving a microphone in like eight people's face and see what they say about just hearing the words critter groups and measure up. Um, Mm -hmm. All right, let's do some fast facts. The waxy monkey frog lives in the semi-arid trees and uh, uh, forest lands of southeastern South America. So that's Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, and Brazil. Um, They eat mostly, as far as they can tell, terrestrial invertebrates. There actually isn't a whole lot of uh, information on their diet that I could find. Um, But they are a close relative of the waxy monkey frog. They mostly eat bugs, insects, spiders. Um, But they also like to make a quick snack of their own molted skin. Ooh. This is called dermatophagia. Uh, Dermatophagia. I don't know how you you pronounce that. But um, it's also common in humans. It's like if you eat your cuticles or chew on the inside of your cheek or something like that. You are eating your own skin. And engaging little, in little garlic and salt, olive oil, a one sauce. That's n- nothing else. Oh. The, I guess you, you you're gonna tell me you're gonna eat like a heaping helping of of your own skin without a one sauce. No. Yeah, I don't. Nobody likes a one sauce. What? A one sauce is disgusting. No, you only put garlic sauce on that if you're gonna use a nice marinara, like a like a like a five cheese marinara or something. Like I that. say garlic and salt and olive oil. It's I'm thinking more like a bread. Human skin's oh, not well, like then, jerky. It's more like bread. I would more like bread. No, it's definitely <laughs> probably got. It's probably more like jerky, more gelatinous. I would say that probably a balsamic vinaigrette would go well with it. Speaking and I would jerky, pair it with a, with a white wine. Do you know where who where had they have? I don't really like jerky, but we finally I know, had but some. You're, Bucky's you're gonna jerky? freaking tell me about Bucky's again? Yes, I knew it. I knew yeah, you were gonna do that. Bucky's jerky is a excellent jerky. Get the Korean barbecue. Everyone likes the the pep black pepper. Um, and it's good, but the Korean barbecue is like, I don't know if like, it's like, if you're supposed to, if it's supposed to be moist or if that's even possible with the desiccated flesh of an animal, but, uh, it was, it was perfection. Uh, as soon as, uh, Bucky's is not 45 minutes away from me and sounds like the, the absolute worst place to bring toddlers, then I will go. I think the worst place to bring a toddler would be to like a rave um, or a war, a war. Yes. Yeah. That would be, pr- that would be a pretty bad place. Antarctica. Um, would be very bad. small, deep sea submarine. Yeah. Mo- the moon, a plane, moon. <laughs> just a regular <laughs> plane, the boat and then Chick-fil-A. That's all I can think of. Um, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, because they're going to want to play in the ball pit and they will 100% walk away with the sickness. Um, anyway, we are getting off topic. We're talking about we're talking about the waxy monkey frog here and how it eats its own skin. Like a lot of it. Eating your cuticles, like fine, whatever. But like if you eat, if, you, if you're going to molt and then snack on it, you got to see somebody about that. Um, so waxy monkey frogs are nocturnal. Uh, and during breeding season, which is the rainy season, they will hang out near lagoons, ponds, and flooded fields. And males call all night to the females. Uh, and when it spends most of its time in the trees, but when it's on the ground, it doesn't hop. It walks mm. like Smeagol. Yeah. It's weird <laughs> to see a frog just crawl, kind of like, okay. Um,. Please hop for me. <laughs> this yeah. is weird. Um, uh, they lay their eggs in the leaves of the uh, trees that hang over bodies of water. Um, since they live in semi-arid conditions, the bodies of water are inconsistent and temporary. So they have to choose their leaves, which we all should be doing, but choose their leaves carefully. 
Um, and if birds are around, they will wrap their clutch of eggs in even more leaves for concealment and protection. And the eggs will hatch into tadpoles that fall into the water below. Mo a lot of frogs lay their eggs in the water, which seems like a good plan, except for fish eating your eating the eggs. But yeah, so that's they'll they'll lay the eggs on in a in a little wrapping of leaves, and then they'll just plop down when they're when they're hatched and they'll go through the normal tadpole cycle and that's that's all i got for for general facts do you have any major no general info do you have any major facts i sure have one uh, i'm calling this one waxy sunscreen so amphibians are known for being wet and wild hmm. or typhoon lagoon i'm not sure which um, if you live near a pond or a bog, you know that these folks start to croak when the sun goes down. Same. <laughs> um, that's because frog skin is soft and supple. Uh, it's made for swimming around and absorbing moisture, not blocking out harmful cosmic radiation from a gigantic nuclear furnace in the sky. So most frogs solve this problem by remaining nocturnal. But the wax monkey frog said the sun will shine on us again, brother. And he means it. He won't be killed by Thanos. Um, to avoid desiccating like a, an ancient vampire in the sunlight, which is something that frogs actually do, they will desiccate, which they'll turn into frog jerky if they're left in the sun. Um, wax monkey frogs, so sec and you know this if you live in a place with frogs and roads. Um, you see some frog jerky every once in a while. Yeah, that's when you, yeah, that's when you bring out the salt. <laughs> uh, wax monkey frogs secrete a waxy substance from glands in their neck. Um, instead of just blocking out sunburns, the wax also seems to lock in moisture. <laughs> like, like Johnny Depp's Willy Wonka's, uh, uh, is the, the hair conditioner he uses locks in moisture. Yeah. Um, if you watch the, a video of this, of them applying this next sunscreen, um, you can see them applying the waxy sunblock by rubbing their hands and feet all over their body. Like a family of gingers at the beach on the 4th of July. And it's very <laughs> satisfying to look at. They're, oh man, they got to do that before they funny. hit the beach. Otherwise they're already doomed. Yeah. So, uh, by, well, this is the second coat. Um, true, true. You got to apply before you leave because you have to get to the car from the house. Yeah. And then, then once, once you get to the beach, uh, your, your divine ages protection has worn off. You need to reapply. <laughs> uh, by controlling water loss through evaporation, they can control their body temperature. Um, better than most frogs, which is a, like a kind of thermal regulation. So this allows them to withstand temperatures as high as 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you prefer a substandard measurement of temperature, uh, weather temperature, 40 degrees Celsius. Is Celsius substandard? Oh, yeah. It's, it it, it's got pros and cons. The, it's each, good for, each Celsius is good too for big. Cooking. Good for cooking, bad for weather. Each, it, each centigrade is, science. is too large. Yeah. But the fact that zero is freezing and 100 is boiling is pretty great. It's handy. It's handy. Yeah. But I want to know, I, if I want to fine-tune my thermostat or know exactly what to wear when I go out, you got to have Fahrenheit, brother. Can you have point... Can I, can I set my thermostat to like 20.5 or something like that? Yeah. That'd be nice. Um, so there are also proteins in the wax that sim stimulate or inhibit the growth of blood vessels, which also may aid in uh, this thermo thermo regulation. Uh, but it also might work in humans. So as warm blooded mammals, we don't need help thermo regulating. But the protein compound found in these waxy secretions might help to kill cancerous tumors. Hmm. How could this be? 
That's a good question. Uh, tumors can only grow so big uh, before they need to grow blood vessels to supply oxygen and enable further growth. Isn't that disgusting? I love it. Give me uh, more. So this protein may stunt the growth of tumors by and prevent them from growing out of control by preventing the deve- the growth of blood vessels and starving them of uh, their oxygen supply. Mm, great. Love it. Yeah. Are you thinking of a tumor with like blood coursing through it with veins? No, no, not at all. Or actually, yes, and it's not bothering me at all. We're, I'm loving this. I'm, <laughs> I, is McDonald's to you? <laughs> this is very McDonald's. It's like a which meatball is, with veins. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> well, that's that's all I got. Uh, Thank so- goodness. <laughs> So they got a little waxy. Go watch a video of them applying this waxy sunscreen. It's very fun. Is does they have the same desperation as gingers at the beach or or what? I haven't seen it. It's a I wouldn't say desperation, but it is diligence. It's vigilance, as you put it. Oh yeah. So I I I mean I don't even know why I put. I think vigilance I put in there. Because of the Medu- uh, Medusa is like always looking. I don't know. It was just something to throw you off. I was thinking scent. of like um, a, they, they vigilantly apply sunscreen to every corner of their body. They rub their little tummies. That's good. I just get my like nose and stuff when I know I'm going to be in the sun all day. It's I've gotten to be like me- two sunburns in my whole life. Yeah, it must be nice to be melanistic. I'm a I'm a white void. I am this. The driven snow. <laughs> what if is is undriven snow less white? Yeah, it's dirty. Um, sure. somebody told me I should get a tan recently, and I said absolutely not. I don't get tans; I get freckles and moles, and eventually sun skin cancer. <laughs> so I am just have accepted whiteness. I get sun poisoning. And then I get a burn. So I'll get like bumps all over my face and arms and stuff. And then I will get a burn if I'm out any longer. But it's only been like, yeah, probably two or three times where I was like the air and sea show without without sunscreen is what did me in. I don't think I've ever gotten sun poisoning. It's like Yeah, I fell asleep on a snorkeling trip and that's what happened. Oof. But uh, I it doesn't. I'm. I mean, I, I'm sure it like can get really bad. It must not have been that bad of a case because it didn't really hurt. It was just kind of sensitive, and it was just like having a bunch of little bumps on your on your skin and face. And uh, well, being very familiar with acne, having bumps all over my skin and face was just par for the freaking course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I th- but the problem the problem is that I because I have um, some melanin in my skin which stops me from burning it quite so easily I don't really think that much about sunscreen uh, oh, so is and you well that means that I don't <laughs> apply it which means that uh, I'm st- still I mean just because you don't burn doesn't mean you're not getting uh, the harmful radiation. I'm still getting just as much radiation as um, as everyone else, but um, the difference is I'm not aware of it because you get radiation and burn, and you're like, but, and but burns you, to avoid the burn, you protect yourself. Worse. Then cancer? No, no, burns are <laughs> way worse for you on your road to cancer. They say like one really bad sunburn is enough. To cause cancer, potentially. In s- some people, but you probably have to be In pretty regularly exposed. Pale people. But there's like two, there's like gamma A and gamma B, and one of them causes burns, and the other one is what causes cancer. And so they both usually come in tandem. And if you don't feel the burn, then you're not going to protect yourself against the cancer. Well, but also like very melanistic people 
generally don't get cancer, skin cancer. And if they do, it's on the like lighter parts of their body, like their hands and the soles of their feet, which I learned from House, an episode of House or a clip from House. So it I might feel be like House is, true, but yeah, I feel like House is not a not a great source of medical knowledge. Probably not for like you know diagnosing yourself, but for just a straight up medical fact. Would, would they would they really go on the internet and lie? <laughs> 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 would they really lie on the internet? Would they really lie on TV? Would Hugh Laurie lie to me? No. He was Stuart Little's no. dad. Yeah, he was Stuart Little's dad. He's incapable of of sin. Um, Stuart Little, written by M. Night Shyamalan. Is it? No, it really is. <laughs> so, really, at the end of Stuart Little, it turns out that Stuart's... Stuart was a boy the whole time, or no? George was a George was a rat the whole time, <laughs> and he he was just trying to assert himself against his adopted older brother. Have you heard the thing that um, Stuart Little isn't a mouse? Uh, no, but I just came up with that after it, figuring out that M Night Shyamalan was the director. In the book, it doesn't say Stuart Little is a mouse. It says Stuart Little is a is a boy that looks remarkably like a mouse. Oh, so he's not even tiny. He can't no, he, even ride in little remote control boats and cars and stuff. No, he is tiny. He's tiny and he looks just like a mouse, but technically is not a mouse. That's really weird. I'm glad in the movie they went with he's a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and Nathan Lane wants to kill him. Um, I think Will That's Arnett different mouse wants movie. to kill Oh, no, wait, Will- no, Mouse hate... Will- <laughs> Man, Nathan Lane hates Nathan- mice. Nathan Lane sure does hate mice. I will... <laughs> <laughs> that, that That is a true fact. 25% of people believe that Nathan Lane hates mice. Because <laughs> um, he appeared in two movies where he tried to kill a mouse. Um, <laughs> wow. I think Will Arnett is the one that wants to kill him in the next movie. It's very violent, these movies. Will Arnett um, is the Falcon? I think I don't know. I'm pulling that out of thin air, and it's been a long time since I've seen Stuart Little too. Stuart Little, James Woods. I'm wrong. That's very different. Very different. Um, it has been a long time, but for some reason, when I thought of it, I heard Will Arnett's voice coming out of that Falcon. Um, but maybe I was thinking of the Vulture from Horton Hears a Who. Like an evil bird that tries to attack the little people. That classic trope. Um, so, anyway, that was the waxy monkey frog. For you out there in Podcastia, guard your favorite leaf. Secrete some of that good, good sunscreen. And snack on your shed skin if you have to. Like the waxy monkey frog here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. <laughs> when might you have to in a survival situation and you've like, like paul f tompkins like okay i'm gonna eat this skin then i'm gonna eat you 
Uh, I think it's probably pretty. It's like keratin, right? It's pretty low in nutrient. 